The Hunter Hunter world is bigger than you think. In fact, the map where the entire anime takes place is but a tiny bit of land inside a giant lake called Lake Mobius. On the banks of this lake is where the real continent is, the Dark Continent. Let's go! This is such a mysterious and dangerous landmass that every time humanity has ventured there, disasters have occurred every time. To fathom how dangerous it is, Miriam is easily the strongest Nen user to exist after his evolution against Isaac Netero is only a grade B if we scale him to the Dark Continent. This was an evolved ant that threatened the entire world and humanity. So now, you can easily perceive the dangers the dark continent poses to the entirety of human civilization. As a result, the governing body of the known world called the V5 established the Invoyability Treaty 200 years ago, which basically is a non-aggression pact between all the nations to not compete in things regarding the Dark Continent. After Netero's experience in the Dark Continent, he and other powerful people in politics influenced the need to create it. However, to even reach the Dark Continent and return alive like Isaac Netero did, is a feat of its own as there have been 149 recorded and sanctioned voyages so far with 28 survivors out of 5 successful voyages which managed to return back to the known world. Although the 28 survivors were people with gold medalist level of physical strength and S tier luck. Only three were able to clear all post-testing and return to their daily lives, putting the survival rate of going to the Dark Continent at a whopping 0.04%. On top of that, even these five voyages were only successful through the help of the magical beast called the Guide. So humans on their own haven't even reached the dark continent of their own ability, at least not on an official basis. The dark continent holds many secrets the hunter hunter community ponders upon. And yes guys, we are going to cover this series on a regular basis more often. I did make videos on it 3 to 7 years ago, displaying on your screen right now. But I want to re-enter this community since the manga is back and I'm loving it. So, what are the questions we are going to answer in this video that you are wondering. Number 1. Don Freaks, the ancestor of Ging and Gon, created a journal. He is currently still writing this journal, which makes him older than 300 years old. But you will find out by the end of this video, how is this even possible? Number 2. Netero visiting the Dark Continent, which helped him achieve his ridiculous level of power and expanded his human life where even at 110 years old, he is at his prime. Number 3. Isaac Netero's son beyond Netero's true plan with the Dark Continent. And lastly, number 4. The five official voyages to the Dark Continent and the threats which have appeared to the human world. We aim to explain everything by diving deep into this unknown land to uncover its mysteries with you. So be sure to be a chat and hit the notification bell because we'll be covering Hunter Hunter from now on. Now as we mentioned earlier, exploring the dark continent does feel like an insurmountable task if you just glance at the amount of water one has to traverse in order to reach the beaches of Lake Mobius. When humans try to wander onto the dark continent, they need to communicate with the magical beasts known as the gatekeepers. Without them, it's near impossible for humans to get to the continent on their own. The gatekeepers then summon a guide which might be a Nen beast that accompanies the humans on their voyage. And at the end of each of the successful voyages, the guide has forced the humans to bring back a world ending threat from the dark continent with them, giving us a hint at the motive of these magical beasts. They could be warning the humans to not venture onto this dangerous land. Humans are said to have come to the middle of Lake Mobius from the Dark Continent alongside magical beasts like the fox bear which attacked Gon at the start of the story. It's possible ancient humans had to escape the hellish environment of the Dark Continent and escape to the faraway unknown islands. So the gatekeepers knowing of this history could be warning the humans not to mess with the very lands 
lands their ancestors fled from. Or, secondly, the gatekeepers were created by the ancient people who migrated to the middle of Lake Mobius. Like, just look at the labyrinth ruins that were found on one of the voyages. We also know how powerful post-mortem Nen can be, which could result in the powerful beings such as the gatekeepers. Death of the Nen user does not result in the end of their abilities. It actually amplifies them even more, resulting in an even more powerful Nen. The reason for this is because a dying user harbors a strong grudge, and this grudge could be placed against the Dark Continent itself by the creators of the gatekeepers. However, even the warnings of great calamities and destruction of civilization can't stop human greed and the thirst for power, because all of these voyages were embarked on by humans in search of high value riches, which by the way are so powerful that it could change the human world and whichever nation or person succeeds in bringing things from the dark continent back, they will shoot straight to the top, becoming the 1% of the 1%. Each of the 5 sanctioned voyages were after one of these resources. These voyages were sanctioned by the International Permit Agency, who had the ability to grant access to the dark continent on an official basis. So let's explain all 5 voyages so that you guys can understand everything about the Dark Continent and we are all on the same page as a community. First were the Begorossi Union who ventured to the northeast shore of Lake Mobius. They landed on a steep mountain range in search of the unnamed rock or Mujinseki. Ging tells us this rock when submerged underwater could generate about 20,000 kilowatts of electricity a day. For reference, the average American household consumes about 10,600 kilowatts of energy per year. Damn! So now you can probably see why these nations went to the dark continent even with the risks involved. Come on guys, this makes sense as countries have done much worse in the real world for oil. What about people who say you're only interested in the Middle East for oil? What? Huh? Oil? Who said something about oil, bitch? You cooking? <laughs> Speaking of risks though, the mountain region where the magical rock was found in belonged to the human keeping monster Pap. This beast likes to feed on humans and keep them as pets. According to the Hunter Association's Dangerous Creatures Evaluation, it lists Pap that it has a danger ranking of A, which is even higher than the Chimera ants. And they nearly took over the world mind you. Pap shrinks its victims to the size of dolls and they all have an antler sticking out of their head. This creature keeps the human pets in a constant state of pleasure whilst taking their life and enslaving them. Pap is likely inspired by the Venus flytrap of our own world, which lures prey in by its vibrant colour and consumes them. However, Tagashi, in a twisted way, of course, made it worse. The Begarose Union had sent 1,000 people on their expedition. The PAP destroyed this force of highly trained experts effortlessly, leaving only 7 survivors. Even these survivors weren't fit to go back to their daily lives, with some of the victims kept in the basement of the International Permit Agency. And by the way, the guide forced these 7 survivors to bring PAP back to the human world as punishment, cementing it as as one of the five calamities even greater than the Chimera Ants. The next nation we know of which went on a voyage to the Dark Continent is the United States of Saheta. They landed on the north shore of Lake Mobius, in the ruins of an ancient labyrinth city which lies 400 kilometers in a forest. These ruins could be evidence of the ancient humans in the Dark Continent, or even intelligent life. Saheta wanted to find the herb for all illnesses. Of course, tying back to the theme of humans needing to explore which can help humanity, but also their greed, knowing the threat it possesses, as this medicine alone could monopolize the entire world with its unique properties in terms of money and much more. They found this herb which is able to cure 10,000 diseases deep within the sea of forests and the ruined labyrinth, but they also met 
Brion, who was the guardian of these ruins. Brion, of course, effortlessly clapped them all, leaving only two survivors. Unlike some of the other threats of the Dark Continent, we actually know what Brion looks like, as it is rocking a humanoid form with a giant sphere in place of a head. Brion was then forced to travel back to the known world alongside the two survivors and classified as a threat level A, just like the pack. The Federation of Ochima also sent 1100 elites on a voyage to the southeast shore of Lake Mobius. They visited the swamps to find nitro rice, which is said to be the ultimate secret to longevity and human life. But only 1% or 11 of them returned as survivors. This crew fell prey to Hellbell, a snake-like creature with two tails and a large black lump which looks like a bell. Just, bro, just look at the- Oh, that shit nasty. Oh! Hellbell infects its prey with homicidal desire, basically turning humans against each other and forcing them to go on a killing rampage. Honestly, it kind of sounds like it can cause a zombie apocalypse except the flesh-eating undead part. Jing also said that Hellbell poses a threat level B to humanity on the same tier as the Chimera Ant. However, the current chairman, Cheeto, has raised its threat level from rank B to A, likely because she's more of a pacifist and a leading medical expert who can ascertain the real threat Hellbell could cause for humanity. Since Hellbell doesn't even need to directly harm humanity, it can let the humans just kill each other, which would cause a vicious cycle of hatred and violence snowballing out of control, making human greed and selfishness actually be its downfall, personified through Hellbell's unique power. The Mimbo Republic also tried their luck with the Dark Continent by sending a voyage to the southeast shore in order to find the Trinity Elixir, the mother solution for all liquids. In this voyage, they encountered the Eye, a gaseous life form with limb-like appendages extending from its form. Not much is known about Ai, but it's deemed a level A threat by the Hunter Association and it was the reason for only two survivors returning back to the known world from this voyage. Its victims are also known to have been spotted in the known world since the guide sent Ai to the human domain as punishment for going to the Dark Continent. Finally, we have the fifth successful voyage to the Dark Continent by the Kakanyu Kingdom 50 years ago. This expedition included none other than Isaac Netero's son, Beyond Netero. This voyage landed on the southern shore of Lake Mobius and found the Metallion. We only know that it's some sort of an alchemy plant, but my speculation is that it's a type of Philosopher's Stone, which can be used as a substitute for any metals and elements. But that's just my boss, the prediction then talk. Although the expedition found this plant and were successful in its retrieval, they also brought back the immortality disease Zobe. Only one hunter managed to survive it. Do you even call this surviving bruh? <laughs> this hunter did not achieve immortality the way everyone wants it. This dude gained the capacity to live entirely self-sufficiently and without sustenance for many years. He basically became immune to death. However, this self-sustenance is achieved through feeding on one's own flesh while the disease regenerates your tissues at a very fast rate. The sanity of those infected is also affected alongside turning their skin dark in color. How this disease is contracted or the cure for it is unknown, making it a rank B threat. There's also a theory in the community that Beyond Netero has contracted this disease, but likely through his mastery of Nen or him outright feeding the disease his Nen, he has curtailed the negative effects from it and is the reason for his longevity. Because if this guy went to the Dark Continent 50 years ago, he had to have been a skilled Nen master and an adult by that logic, which would make him at least 60 to 70 years old right now, but he looks very sturdy for his age. He even Zeno Zoldic at age 64 looks like an old man, so why wouldn't be on Netero? So with his pedigree as Netero's son likely having insane Nen aura, it's possible he's living with the immortality disease as we speak. Now, those were just the official expeditions to the Dark Continent. It is possible that there have been many more unrecorded journeys and one of them involves Isaac 
freaking Netero. On one of his two voyages to the Dark Continent, Netero was accompanied by Zig Zoldic and Lene Orderver. This person. <laughs> this expedition left Netero unsatisfied as the only triumph he could achieve in the continent was of survival. One theory in the community is that Netero and his crew found nitro rice and consumed it. This would explain Netero's abnormally long lifespan as he's at least 110 years old right now when we meet him for the first time in the story. Also, through his fight against Meriam, we can see just how much of a beast Netero actually is. At such an old age, he fights and strikes fear into all hunters as if he's in his prime. Even his companion Lene is alive currently as we see her during the hunter election arc and it is likely that Zig Zoldic is also alive and is actually Maha Zoldic. If we look at a picture of Maha Zoldic, he strikes a similar old appearance to Lene. So it's not far-fetched to think that Netero could have consumed nitro rice which is set to extend human life and longevity. Also, if nobody tried it, how do they know it worked? Another theory which comes from Netero's voyage is that the wish granting Nanika, which possesses Killua's sibling Alaka, is the threat Netero, Zig, and Linne encountered at the Dark Continent. On their way back, the guide then made them bring back Nanika to the human world as punishment. It's also possible that Zig Zoldic himself got possessed by Nanika, and now Nanika has just switched over to Zig's descendants after his death. Even through all these voyages, we still know very little about the Dark Continent. Most of the information we do have about the herbs and different locations comes from a book published by a guy 300 years ago. This man, Don Freaks, has been traveling the shoreline of the Dark Continent for 300 years. So far, he has published the East edition of his book, and he's likely still cataloging the western shore of Lake Mobius. With the crazy items found in this mysterious land, it's no surprise that he could still be alive and kicking, adventuring around this deadly landmass. One question you're probably wondering as to why this book landed in Jing's hand. A popular theory in the Hunter x Hunter community is that in Netero's unofficial voyage to the Dark Continent, he must have met Don Freaks, in turn telling him the outcome of humanity and his bloodline. Don would then give Netero a copy of his journal, whom would eventually give it to his descendant Jing Freaks as he would have known his goal and want to explore. Another piece of evidence for this is that Jing Freaks was the one that informed us that Netero explored the Dark Continent. Otherwise, he would only possess this knowledge if Netero had told him the truth about Don Freaks whilst handing over the journal about the Dark Continent. Secondly, Jing quotes Netero's words saying this place is too big when describing the Dark Continent. Don Freaks' journey to the New World is locked up in the basement of the International Permit Agency and was believed to be fiction for a long time. However, now it is humanity's greatest weapon as they once again travel to the Dark Continent and this time on a scale never seen before. In the present, the king of the Kakin Empire, Nasubi Huigao Ro, this dude has financed an expedition to the Dark Continent with the help of Beyond Netero. The empire wants to settle their empire on the Dark Continent and currently everyone including the king, his children, and 200,000 people from the country are aboard the ship Black Whale 1 to the Dark Continent. King Nasubi has also promised to bring a million people to the Dark Continent. Yeah, a million! However, the hunters Association understanding the risks of the continent has plans to disembark all passengers except the members of the Hunter Association at an island complex named the New Continent, which lies right before the borders of the Gatekeeper. They will pass this land off as being the Dark Continent itself to not endanger 200,000 lives. Now aboard the Blackwell 1, the succession war is raging on between the children of King Nasubi. So hit that notification bell and like button so you don't miss out that video. And check out this video about Denji and the Chainsaw Devil R from Chainsaw Man.